Hello everybody and welcome to the first pre-recorded Pure Art 360 live with Danny Humberstone. Hello. Danny, where are you answering the questions from today? I am answering the questions from my little studio nook um, in Wing Gallery, High Street, Wadhurst. I hear that's quite I, a good gallery. It's a very, very good gallery. The best gallery. In fact, it's a winning gallery, an award-winning gallery. It is. No! Last year we won an award. That seems like so long ago, doesn't it? I know, it seems a very long time ago. It was pre, well, pre the world ending really, but yeah, we're still an award-winning gallery and we've got some brand new artists in at the <laughs> moment, which is very yeah, exciting. Who's got that's new? Oh, we've got, uh, we had oh, the award thing, because do you know we had an award called the Wing Award? Just a bit, yeah. Okay. All right, well, we had 300 applicants and uh, we got down to 10. And then we put it to our mailing list public vote and they selected, I think, three and then we picked one, something like that. Anyway, her name is Jane Clatsworthy. Clatsworthy? She's excellent. She's from Tewkesbury and she is an abstract artist, quite a pure abstract artist, actually. Not pure, but pure rather than semi or whatever. Not sort of um, uh, one word I'm looking for, uh, geometric, but quite fluid, very pretty, very nice. And we've got uh, Jill Brown, SWA, who's a sculptor, um, very experienced, beautiful, very fine work. And then yesterday we had Libby Gooch um, come in. And in fact, Molly Barnes, she's one of the few people I've ever met recently who hadn't actually met you or hadn't actually met you. And I don't meet anyone like that anymore. There's no one left in the southeast of England that doesn't know you. Oh. I found her. I found that last one. Anyway, I'm wearing my pure pin. Leslie, thank you. Love it. Can you see my pure pin? But I also was saying to Molly earlier, I'd quite like an impure pin to wear with it. But that's me. Anyway, I'm at Wing, Mo. <laughs> Fab. So for the, those of you that don't know, um, Danny and I are very, very good friends. <laughs> I was going to start off again. I don't know you at all, Danny. Mm -hmm. um, I would be dying. But could you tell us a bit about mm. your artist story and how you got to where you are now? I can. Um, I'll cut it short, but uh, essentially I was very fortunate to go to a, um, when I was about nine, we lived in London until then, but, and I went to a Rudolf Steiner school, which if you know about the Rudolf Steiner schools, they're very art based. And it was like being on a permanent um, foundation uh, year, really, because we did everything. We did painting, we did um, clay, modelling, pottery, woodwork, um, copper, metal work, all sorts of things, sketching, charcoal sketching, going and get trees, making charcoal, and then, you know, right back to basic stuff. Uh, watercolour, oils, you know, you name it, and um, very, and also called drama, they did a lot of drama, and we did a lot of languages and music, so the whole education, I mean, it's based on a philosophy, but the whole education is very um, art and the arts based. So I was there for, I left a year early. I left when I was 17 because so desperate to go to art school. I used to walk around school with a beret on and a large great coat and portfolio under my arm. I just, I was sort of, I think I was just so desperate to be an art student. I thought if I dress the parts, surely it'll happen. So, so I went to Brighton, I did fashion and art combined, and then I, oh, loads of things, a few things happened and I left. I, the truth is I got asked to leave because, um, <laughs> stop giggling, because I was a little bit naughty girl, and I know you'll find that surprising, um, and the pillar of the community, as I am today, and um, I basically didn't turn up very much. I didn't really like the way they taught art. I'd been... I had such a sort of classical education and also the history of art was another thing we were taught at school. I don't know, it just didn't quite fit. So anyway, I bailed and then started a business. And then, and then sort of, anyway, I sort of went into, I went into fashion for a while, hated that, realized what I liked about fashion was the drawing aspect. I'd always drawn, always painted all my life since I was a little tiny wee child. Um, and then I started a, I used to do loads of, um, like freelance drawing and painting and stuff for people. So uh, I had an agent and he put, he, we were thinking of being, doing a greetings card, um, thinking being a, uh, a greetings card designer. And then I thought I had this idea for, for some little characters and I started my own business and the agent said to me, you'll never make any 
money doing that. That's a ridiculous idea. And it was, but it, we did, and it was very successful. And it was called Cards That Won't Cost the Earth. And it was in the uh, late 80s, 90s, and we had these little stick figures, and it was quite well known. I mean, we used to sell, it was really quite a successful business. Um, and then we branched out to various other ranges, and I did all the artwork for that. And in between times, I would do, I would paint and just kept that going. And then um, I, the business went, I had problems with the business, I had bomb, and I just sort of got a little bit ill. So I started properly painting and I paint, I went from, because I'd always been quite a sort of, quite a figurative painter, I suppose, and always drew. I was a big believer in drawing, maybe talk about that later. Um, but I went really into abstract work, it was absolutely bizarre. And then um, started to work as an abstract painter um, for probably, you know, it's going to be as much as, I don't know, nearly 10 years probably before I sort of came back to sort of figurative roots and uh, and and uh, started painting and drawing fruit. But that's another story. So there you are, and here I am today. And meanwhile, I met probably the, the most significant person, I guess, would have been Valerie Brinton. One second, please. Um, this lady was my art mentor, total amazing artist and everything and I sort of she sort of taught me loads of stuff in a, some more of an atelier style so she'd point out the error of my ways quite quite uh, um, in quite an honest fashion but also as an amazing uh, painter herself in fact she was she was a what they called a, in the old days a commercial painter and it was quite frowned on people and in fact she was she never forgot someone calling her commercial painter like it's a bad thing but um, kind of need that you need to be a commercial painter as well as painting from the soul so and the heart so there you go that's the bait that's it in a whistle stop tour and so tell us a bit about your relationship with Valerie in terms of the September art show and also the art shop that you used to run okay um so September art exhibition what her start began I think the year you were born is that 1996 yeah I heard. Um, and basically Valerie and her then husband, well, her husband, he obviously was still husband, but he died. Um, he would come in some money or won some money on the pools and he bought himself a present of some shares in a football team that he really liked. And he decided to gift Valerie a, um, to a huge body of work around, I think. At home. Um, the, the, uh, commemoration hall here in Waterhouse, the lovely old 1930s built barn of a hall, um, commemoration hall he he bought her a week uh, there to show her works she had a complete fit loved it but had a bit of a meltdown re being able to fill the whole thing so she involved a couple of other artists and it became known it beca they decided to call it the september art exhibition i bet you can't guess why three guesses <laughs> yeah it was in october no it was in <laughs> september and she they did that they and it was quite successful and then um sorry i'm having a bit of a hair issue as you can see i haven't been to hairdressers since before it's about january um so that was it was successful so then they started they produced it the following year and the following year and a couple of years later, i think i joined i think i i exhibited there for the first time in 1998 99 but it was quite hard to get in by then three years later and it was quite a it was quite a sh there was a submission show you had to put your work in you had to go through a panel all that sort of jazz and um which was good because it you know um so then i joined the committee and then valerie and i sort of about six of us but valerie and i sort of ran it together for a long time meanwhile uh referring to my previous comments about uh my uh, it's had a bit of a liaison between my business, one business ending and what to do. Um, I was uh, working in a gallery in Tunbridge Wells and I knew Valerie from the show and she said to me, I'm thinking of starting an art shop. Can you come over and talk about it? Because you've had businesses. Oh, I also had uh, a couple of businesses in Brighton shops and um, selling uh, greetings cards and quite cool things. And... Um, so I said, yeah, absolutely, I'll give you a hand. And she said, I really, what I really want is you to come and run it for me. And I said, well, I can't, so I'm working in this gallery. Long story short, gallery went pear-shaped and woman was a nutter. And um, 
I rushed over to Valerie and said, is the position still vacant? And she said, yes, or it kind of was, it was a bit complicated. Anyway, so then for a year, I helped to start the art shop. And then the second year, she said, I really don't want to do it. I don't really like having a business. So I bought it off her and uh, I liked it so much. I bought the company. Who remembers that? Um, and then I had the shop for about 16, 17 years and it was called the art shop, mainly because I saw on people's shopping lists, they put, you know, butcher, baker, candlestick maker, art shop. So I thought, right, okay, good name. Um, and does what it says on tin and all that. And then when Valerie died, in four years ago, I uh, know, coming up four years ago, and um, 9th of November, same day that Trump got in, actually, it's a bit strange, um, two devastations, and she, um, I, the family were very kind, but I had to sort of leave the art shop, and then Gavin uh, Roweth's dear friend, who's a sculptor, who has and owns Wing Gallery, um, well, I, I, I sort of basically invited myself to dinner, as it were, and said to him, look, if I can come and work, I need a space to work and I'll, I'll uh, sit and look off the gallery at the same time because I've had some experience working in galleries. Briefly owned a gallery in um, Borough Market in town, London, um, which was went weird, but only because of, anyway, another story. So, um, <laughs> and, and I'm here, so I'm still here. But yes, Valerie was the most amazing person, one of the most amazing, truly, truly amazing people I've ever met in my life. Uh, a real inspiration and it was just brilliant we had an absolute uh we had a ball actually running the running the show and also and you know it was next the shop was next to her house um i neglected to say so we would you know we were in touch a lot and sort of kept an eye on her for the last few years fair Ferrera Roche. <laughs> Gave her Ferrera Rocher. She had a massive sweet tooth at the end. Actually, it was really odd because she was a she enjoyed a glass or of wine or two, and um, and then it was sort of it became very chocolate orientated. So yes, as you well know, it's our and then I've developed. I'm, I think I'm turning into her actually. And um, what's the wine or tea? <laughs> right. I mean, I, who better to turn into? Frankly, you know, apart from the smoking, but we won't go there. But uh, yes, that's the story, Valerie. That's the story of Valerie and I. That's Love very it, inspiring. I, 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 was, I was very honoured to have known her for the short time I did as well. Did she try and feed you a lot? <laughs> yeah, always with Ferrero Rocher. Yeah, with Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> she constantly, she used to come in the back, the back door of the art shop with just mm -hmm. boxes of them and be yeah. like, you need to eat, you need to eat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She and I first, when we first had the art shop, we used to bring me giant food, you know, lunch. You know me, I don't really eat. I have a few sticks of vegetables and... At lunchtime, very soon, come in with like a pasty and baked beans or chip, something really sort of nice. But I, oh. I ballooned, ballooned. But <laughs> who cares? I know. So show me a bit about um, of your works that are behind you. So you've got the big apple. We've got yeah. dragon fruit. The big apple there, and it's a little companion piece. Can you see? There's an apple core, uh, very intelligently titled core. And then behind me there, you see there's a little lemon, dragon fruit, and then I think there's a damson. Can you see the damson there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is lemon the one that you posted on your Instagram recently with the yes, kind of step-by-step? Step? My step-by-step. Step. Um, I've got a little painting of, check it out, fruit zoom. Or, or fruit of zoom. Actually, I've got a client in Holland has, oh, don't do that. That sounds terrible. Terrible accent and very bad thing to do. Edit that at more. Um, he bought that, which is smashing. And then this is, I just brought this. Here's one I made earlier. This is a Venetian mask piece. And all of this series of masks, they're all, they're all genuine um, Venetian masks. And um, they're all called secret passions because the idea being that behind the masks, they don't know that they're an apple and a pear. And that there are differences because obviously as you know at the carnivale uh, in venice it used to be a bit of a thing you could you could be anybody in society you could dress up uh and they wouldn't know who you were which i think is a very cool thing anyway that's uh, yes those are the works around me i have an awful lot but um i oh yeah i've got some minis i've got these out i did i also do these pocket paintings i do uh, you know huge pieces and normal size sorry my voice went really high then i don't know why um normal sized and then i do we they're called pocket paintings they also framed as a b 
And this was just an idea. I think it's a bit creepy, actually. I don't know why. I'm not sure. And I like it. But it was, do you remember I did these whole, the emojis in apple, in fruit? I don't know why. Lots of things work in fruit. Maybe emojis don't. That's something to think about. So, yes, all sorts of different things. And then I do very complex pieces, which I don't have any to show you, called muses, where you, I put the little worlds inside the fruit and then have the peel coming back, peeling back to reveal the inner world sort of thing. And then I often do those to, to commission for portraits. Um, so you can tell someone's story through things, objects, places, landscapes. Um, and the great thing, of course, is that because it's painting, you can shove it all together. Mind you, probably you, know, you can do that on Adobe Photoshop, but this is this is a, a way of um, the story sort of continuing through a um, series of um, I suppose images and of ideas and thoughts, if that makes sense. And the it's last one I did actually, I put it was a birthday surprise, and I I found out when the where the moon was because there was a point where the moon fitted into the story and I, I found out where the moon was and on her birthday and painted it in and then put this time don't you use tricks not that I'm against it I just don't but it's um, a little bit of iridescent white on the moon so look it did sort of show up and then I put the dog star Sirius in the piece too because the piece focused very much on the woman's animals past and actually sort of present and past which was super difficult because trying to represent an animal that's in order to show a difference between the animals that were still alive and present and the animal that had departed but still had a place. So tricky, but not but doable in the end. I think I think a lot of people would be interested in your process of painting, which you talked about a bit with your lemon. So mm -hmm. how does that start? I know very well your canvas prep. <laughs> mm, yes, you do. Uh, yes, well, I have I have an extraordinarily talented young lady who preps my canvases. So, OK. Quite literally, here's one we have we made earlier. Molly did this. Basically, it's a canvas <clears throat> and stretch canvas, and it ha already has a gesso or a, a surface on it. But I don't like them; they tend to be a bit shiny and weird. So um, we usually use between what five and six Molly um, layers of gesso. Um, applied dried applied dried blah, blah 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 you build it up and then we sand it to maybe three or four grades of sandpaper till you almost burnish so you've got a nice smooth as a baby's arm um, <laughs> um surface to paint on and then basically i mean this is this is nearly next this i was going to paint this next actually because i picked it it's a beauty but i've got a fig commission just come in but apple oh. So I know it's an absolute corker, isn't it? Really beautiful. Um, the leaf, I've kept the leaves like that. Though. Even if they dry, you know, it doesn't, it's okay. Um, and just, I use an oil pencil, kind of a sepia, and then I draw, I tend to grid it, just put a little line through, just to give yourself the center point of the painting. Um, only really applies when you're um, making, like putting a fruit on, a single fruit on a, on a canvas. If you're, if you're making a composition, slightly different rules apply um not that there are any rules but um and then i draw out the 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 fruit and then i used to prime uh in my my brown color that i make up and um, that molly knows the recipe of but um shush, shush. <laughs> um i said to leslie i was like that's your deepest darkest secret taken to the grave i've never told anyone that i know it <laughs> one of those deepest darkest secrets and exactly i will find you I say people are going to be on me now. They're going to be like, Psst, tell us, tell us. <laughs> it's not black though. It really isn't black. Um, black is deadening. You don't want to use that anyway. Not by itself. Um, so I used to just then prime it with a black, with the with the brownie, blacky brownie, brown dark color, and then do it, draw, draw it out in white. But actually, I, I it's I don't do that anymore. I uh, tend to say draw it out and then fill in the background as you go. And then I start with, um, as on the lemon, you start, I start with a um, opaque colors and you sort of start to paint in the general form. Um, and a lemon, for example, is quite a good one because it's quite hard. Even f I, I would say it's even one of the more, more difficult pieces because there's not as much, there are loads of color variants, but you know, with, with this, with this apple, you can see quite easily, you know, you certain, the lines and things help give it form. 
So, um, but yes, basically, and then I, I wait for it to dry and then I blend the colour. Anyone who knows me will get, and gets taught by me, will be sick of the word blend because it's my key word. And you blend and then you work again on it and you can keep layering basically opaque, semi transparent, transparent, and um, glazes over the top. And then you can put some detail in and then you might want to glaze that back and soften. So, because when something is softened, it looks more natural. When you've got uh, a very hard, you know, when you've got a very hard line, it's more graphic. I mean, it's a, it's a style, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just not what I choose to do. And there's a technique, fumato, which it starts with an S, which, but in Italian, which means smoke, and that's what you're basically doing. You're giving the impression of, uh, not smoke, but you're, you're blending so that it's, it's um, the illusion to the eyes is, uh, it's not, well, it's not hard, it just looks, it looks realistic. Yeah. Lots of words. So that's what you do. Uh, and then you're finishing off. And for me, the, I, was, the, the, I was saying Libby Goose this yesterday, actually. The, the joy for me is when it gets really, really up and in your face, detail-wise. I mean, you could be, you could kind of take a year, I reckon, painting a picture sometimes because, and with my work, there's almost no such thing as overworking because it just keeps adding. And if you're making such tiny layers, you you know you can you can get away with it of, of glazes but also and then if you soften the edge disappear it slightly maybe into background color which you do whilst the, the colors are still slightly wet but not too wet with a dry soft brush you uh you get that i say you get that softened that was one of valerie's great tricks tricks uh, techniques that she taught me with this whole thing the softening and where you add light painting light of course is another thing but yeah, that's, that's how it goes. And then you do your varnish. You used to do shiny varnish, didn't you? And now you do your matte varnish predominantly. Varnish. Lovely man, matte varnish. Um, I don't know why. I think, I think it's just because you, if you use, even, the, even sort of using liquid or a semi, a semi uh, in fact, they don't make a, um, a satin for oils, but that's not bad, but it just bleaches. You try and photograph, you put it in your house, and you've got some, isn't anywhere near light it can bleach uh, and also for photography uh, it's really much easier to take a picture of a mat and I just think there's something quite nice it looks a bit more contemporary to me at the moment because it might change I might change I might change my mind but um, I mean I was a bit worried of how it would actually affect how people saw them because people could also um, do have a series of clients that if you know that like to collect them so in some instances I've slight I rejig varnishes for them I'll do that if you have my paintings and you want me to do that. I'll be very happy to do that. <laughs> yeah, cool. That. I've got mine. I should have had mine. I said this last yeah. yesterday. I should have had it strategically placed on the wall. And I just, yeah, you should. I've let you everyone should. down, really. But I have a lovely yeah, story. Down. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine, Molly. We all, yes. Well, as long as you like it, that was the main thing. Yeah, but. And um, so people were interested in what types of paint you use, like literally, like the brands you use for your oil paints. Okay, um, I use, I can show you actually, I use, my favourite is, look at that pink, that's Old Holland from Holland. Oh, I've done it again. Um, <laughs> uh, which is cold pressed linseed oil, still pressed between the big stones of a windmill, beautiful paint. Company started in 1664, same as a famous beer, that's why I remember it, I don't drink beer, but never mind. I also, um, oh, where is it? The next one is uh, Williamsburg from um, New York, New York, New York. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Strong pigment. Um, very random brand we used to sell at the art shop called Shinhan, which is South Korean, but actually it's a banger. There's some amazing colors there. I don't know anyone else that does this incredible pink. Um, and I think they're kind of more of a, we sell them quite cheaply. I think they're kind of what you'd, you'd call a studio oil. They're not sort of a, they're not a they're not a student they're not a, they're probably not a professional oil but they are they are a good a good brand um and then you've got your dear old Windsor's and Windsor and Newton which you know are they're okay they're a good standard paint they're a good some of their colors better than others um but yeah no, no they're good I use those as a as a sort of fill-in or an extra I mean there's hot loads um Valerie god lover less uh, she left me her oil paint collection in her work well she left me her oil paint are all paints collection. So I've got, as you know, I've got lots and lots of oils. Hooray. Um, but yes, those are the things. And I use, um, 
liquid original, you know, the uh, as a dryer for um, to dry it, which actually was quite handy because if you're using the glazing technique and you mix the oil with a bit of um, liquid, oh, phone. Let me just get it. You can That's cool. Oh. That's cool. <laughs> I want to buy a painting. Halloween gallery. That's that's all right. Bye bye. Wrong number. I think you wanted the barber. <laughs> I would do it actually. <laughs> I'll give it a go. Um, yeah, liquid. Use liquid for, for glazing because it just dries quicker and you can crack on with it. You need to tell us a bit about mm. your newest venture. We were talking about your businesses earlier. Your Fruit Loops, which everyone's just obsessed with online. Fruit Loop. Yes, thank Fruit you, Molly. Loop. Thank you for bringing the Fruit Loop up. It's very exciting. <laughs> well, in lockdown, and people started to wear masks, I thought um, my little business brain or whatever, or I just I don't know, my brain... Uh, I was on overload and I was thinking, uh, I bet you it's going to, I mean, I, we probably all thought this, it's going to be a thing. I'm sure this is going to be a, a real, you know, quite a, um, like a fashion thing. And I can see masks be on catwalks and all the rest of it this, this main season in, in the autumn and then, you know, uh, next spring and all of it. And I thought, and I looked, I went online, I checked out what Vogue were up to and other companies were doing just out of, just out of interest really. Uh, so that happened and then I was in a shop and someone said hello Danny and I was wearing a mask it was a wing mask actually and we have uh, our branded uh, masks here too and um, I, she said oh I would have only known it was you because um, because you've got wing on it so I thought actually it's not a bad idea to have something that's very individual so you know, perhaps people would under, you know, get that it's you. So I, I did the big app, one of my big apples. I made a mask out of that. I put it on Facebook and stuff and had a few inquiries um, and some excitement over that. And then I just, I don't know, it wasn't even a month ago. Uh, if you remember, came up with the name Fruit Loop and then got certain Molly Barnes to uh, assist me more than ably and uh, to design, do the, the logo. And then we made an Instagram page and then I re then I've, got myself the printer is really good and you can do sort of quite random orders you know you can so you can be very you can have it's not like it used to be cracky I mean printing used to be a nightmare we had greetings card companies you have to print thousands of everything and, and you could lose all your money in the ones that didn't sell so this is I mean I to be honest I, this is not a there's not a, a fast track to wealthdom here it's just very, I just like doing it. And I've got a little, I'll try to show you a display unit. Yeah, very, they do. They're very cute. Oh, um, I'll just fall over first. Hang on. <laughs> this is the Fruit Loop point of sale unit with woo, design there, please note. And then they get, um, a couple of shops having them they have a sort of basic 20 so you've got we've got a whole we've got 24 in the range now actually I'm just doing a catalogue um bake well lit biscuits we've got a satin very popular with your gentlemen uh we've got some this is a really it's probably one of the most popular ones it's the slows and the quirky side to them is look at that uh that they come with a little badge and um a little matching badge and uh let me show you hang on and um, the reason for that is, oh, there's the rose. I'm not sure. Oh, the rose is quite pretty, actually. Rose, pretty rose. See, look, there's a little badge there. And what you do is you wear your badge, thus, Fruit Loop. You take a Fruit Loop mask and you just can wear it on your badge if, you're not, if it's not on your pretty face. There you go. Ta-da! You can't really see me. There you go, look. <laughs> Awesome. So that's the idea. And what they come, they've got carbon filters. They also have a little adjustable gizmo so you can, you know. I've got my filters here. There you go. <laughs> filters. Um, so, yeah, and then the little gizmo can uh, tightens, tightens the uh, strap, the um, elastic thing, so that you don't have to. So if you've got a big, big wide face, it doesn't matter. But if you've got a teensy weensy little face, um, then you might want to adjust it. So this is red combo here. Um, so yeah, that's this is the badge. Ding. So I wear next to my pure badge. 
you see, of great importance. Where's the best place for people, if they're interested, to contact you to buy one? Is it to come into Wing? Well, uh, either Wing, if they're in Wing, I've got a, I've got a whole whole uh, collection here in the gallery. Or if you are not in the locale, easiest thing is just to go to Instagram and there's a Fruit Loop uh, Instagram page. Um, in fact, it, it just comes up as Fruit Loop, but it's Fruit underscore Loop 2020. I couldn't believe that was available. Very pleased. Or just go to me, to Danny Humpstone. Or you could just email me. Um, I think I'm easy enough to find, but it's info at dannyhumberstoneart.com. Thanks so much. <laughs> uh, but yeah relatively which should be easy enough hopefully to, to find I think even I've got my own Facebook and on Facebook there's a I've put them on there very boring people stupid but it's exciting having like a new baby or a new puppy as some people have I think it's really exciting I was thinking in our next wing tv you should do like product placement sponsored by Fruit Loops yeah it's a great <laughs> idea isn't it like in Truman show you're walking yeah you're walking by <laughs> endlessly with masks on <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a great idea right, i might put an advert in the wing times as well <laughs> doing that's is that allowed yes as we write it and yeah good you got to <laughs> yeah. um, do you have any advice from for artists that has come from your personal experience as an artist um i was thinking about this when you sent me the questions i think the only thing i can say is work hard um don't be put off um, make sure it's really, really, really what you want to do. I mean, in terms of people who want to try and make a living from it, otherwise just enjoy and, and also work hard. Um, don't be derivative and be as, as original and unique as you possibly can. But if it, whatever your thing is, the thing you find yourself drawn to painting, then, you know, do that. Don't mind too much about everything else. That's my voice. Have a little drinky now and again, probably. <laughs> it's in between. Yeah, obviously. And my last question for you mm. is: What is next for Danny Humberstone? Uh, fabulous wealth. Um, <laughs> crazy, crazy amounts of no. I, uh, do you know, Molly? My, I have no idea because as soon as you start putting things in a, uh, what was in such a weird year, right? And and this year was going to be completely packed. It was so, it was going to be, I would say, the busiest. Exhib exhibition and fair and sh group show year. I think certainly I and Gavin was the same. Was, we was all set to be a very busy year. So, and it has been a busy year, but in a totally different way. It's interesting. I didn't ever think of Fruit Loop. I didn't think of like the artist support pledge was excellent. Well, I took off suddenly, didn't it? And it just seemed to really sort of gain traction, which was great. And I think, I, I mean, as ever, I just want to work, do my work. I, it's the thing I love most really that's not a human or a cat um and doesn't come in a bottle with champagne written on the outside no seriously i would I, it's the thing i love most so i think to be able to work to be able to continue to make uh, a living doing it um to get always better to always be better um to enjoy things and and maybe to uh and I started exercising and I'm doing the bit of the running and the walking and all that now. And I'm just quite keen to get healthier as well as a person because you do sit a lot, don't you? I like to sit a lot doing detail. And um, so, yeah, no, to, to do, to just to, to do, to do really, to good, do really good work. I mean, ideas and inspirations tend to come. I think there's a, a people will sometimes worry about it. I think you let your brain do its thing. And the more you work, the more your sort of creative portal opens, I think. And, it's not a coincidence that people say if they're gardening, sorry, there's a, ooh, an ambulance um, outside. Uh, it's not a coincidence when people are doing gardening or they're doing some sort of task with their hands and they're, they're basically, you know, their brain is allowed to run free or I find driving a good one. Probably shouldn't say, um, <clears throat> but it's quite good. It lets the, I don't know, your imagination start to work. Um, and I tended to follow it rather than try and, and people said in the past, are you going to get sick of painting fruit? Or, oh no, I nearly did a voice then of an irritating person. Sorry, it's not an irritating question at all. Cut that. Um, it, but I had this one woman who kept coming into the art shop and saying, are you still painting fruit? Yes. Excuse me. There's, there's, still, well, there's still fruit on the planet. I'm still painting it. And there was a symbolic element to fruit. And we hadn't gone there, but another, another time. So, yeah, I, yeah. 
So is that is that all right? Is that all right? Absolutely. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about as part of this PR 360? Um, no, I don't think so. I think it's oh, it a cracking idea um, of, of our Leslie's and it looked beautiful and I'm just sorry I couldn't do go to the, be at the private view things. Life is, has been quite hectic recently. So, but yeah, no, not really a mole, but uh, thanks, mate. <laughs> lovely well it's lovely to speak to you Danny I'm sure I'll speak to you tomorrow aren't I <laughs> yeah I'm so, almost so. <laughs> speak to you very soon <laughs> right thanks Thank you. everyone thank, thank you, you Danny bye 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 I'll do the clapper